Um, Mr. Speaker, thank you very much. I have to catch my breath after uh, listening for the last hour to an unbelievable stream of consciousness. Um, but I want to be very specific about some things that we really need to do here in Congress. Uh, often we come to the floor uh, in the evening and we talk about the subject of making it in America, rebuilding the American economy uh, brick by brick, road by road, job by job, uh, and putting the manufacturing sector back on its feet. Today I want to talk about one of those. Today my colleagues and I want to talk about one part of that uh, Make It in America uh, agenda, and that is uh, not the trade, taxes, energy, labor, education, or research, but rather the infrastructure part of that uh, equation. Uh, infrastructure is the foundation upon which any economy grows, and the American infrastructure has a problem. Here's the problem. The American infrastructure is falling down, falling apart, overused, overworn, and in desperate need of rebuilding. We can do it. America once built the greatest infrastructure in the world. We're falling way, way behind in our own country, and we're not even keeping up with other countries, such as China, who is building everything everywhere and laying in place an infrastructure that will carry them into the future. Here's why we're not keeping up. Here's why we're falling down. Here's why we have potholes. Here's why cars are losing their ability to stay on the road. Not because the drivers can't drive, but because we're not spending the money that we once did. Way back in 2002, we were spending some $325 billion a year. Right now, we're down to somewhere below $250 billion on infrastructure. That is why we see bridges collapsing. That is why we have the transportation snarls and all of the problems in our transportation system. As they say in the Middle East, just wait, it'll get worse. Here in America, we're just two months away from this happening. We're going to fall off the transportation bridge. The funding for transportation programs funded by the federal government will run out of money sometime in August, perhaps in early September, depending on several factors that are simply unknown. But the funding for maintenance and constructions of our roads and bridges by the federal government will be over. There will be no more federal funding available unless this Congress acts. And we have a road map. We have a road map. We have a plan. We have a program. President Obama and the Transportation Department with Secretary Fox recently laid out a program called the Grow America Act. And it's a program that would provide $302 billion over the next, over the next uh, four years, money that is desperately needed for rail, buses, ports, the freight system, buses meaning light rail, heavy rail, the transit systems in our cities, and the, uh, the rail systems, Amtrak, bridges and highways. All of this is available. The Grow America Act is a real proposal. It's one that this Congress should take up. There are some that have better ideas and better plans. We'll bring them forward. Highways, about $199 billion. For bridges and buses, about uh, $19 billion. Uh, so, excuse me, $79 billion. About $10 billion for the freight systems and for the rail, another $10, 10 to uh, $12 billion. All of this is possible. But we need to do this. We need to finance it. And this program by the President is fully financed. The $302 billion relies upon the existing uh, excise tax that all of us pay for our gasoline, for our uh, diesel fuel, and the President would add another $100 billion or so to fill up the pot so that we'd have the $302 billion, which is some 27 percent more than we presently are spending on the transportation system. 
Where does that extra money come from? It comes from corporate reforms. But that's not only, that is not the only proposal on how to finance our transportation system. And in a few minutes, I'll turn this over to my colleague from Oregon, Mr. Blumenauer, who will talk about that in some more detail. Uh, also joining us tonight is, is my colleague from uh, Kansas, Mr. Cleaver, who will be talking about uh, his transportation systems in that area. But this is a real plan. A real proposal, all of the details that we would need, how we could develop the freight programs, where you connect the ports to the rail systems, uh, how you would provide those intermodal proposals, how we could repair the bridges, the funding for it over the period of time, and the highways. And it's all coordinated around fixing the things that are broken. Not necessarily adding, but fix first, fix what is broken. And the rail systems. Uh, critically important, the inner city rail, the Amtrak system here on the East Coast, and this happens to be uh, the California, uh, the Capitol Corridor in my own uh, district that runs between uh, Roseville all the way to San Jose through San Francisco, one of the most heavily used rail corridors in the entire system. One of the things that we also talk about here in the Make in America is that we spend our tax money on American-made goods. If we're going to spend $302 billion of the American taxpayer money, my legislation would increase the Buy America provisions. And I want to give you just one brief example of what it means. This is the most modern locomotive in the United States and arguably one of the most modern uh, electro, uh, electric locomotives in the entire world. It is built in Sacramento. This is uh, money that was was made available in the American Recovery Act, the stimulus bill, and written into that bill was a provision that said that money for the some $800 million for Amtrak locomotives had to be spent 100 percent on American-made uh, locomotives. Siemens, a German company, the big German manufacturing company, looked at that and said $800 million, 100 percent American-made, we could do that. So they took their factory in Sacramento, they expanded it, and this is the first, 100, first locomotive among those that will come off the line, some uh, 70 or 80 of them, that will be 100 percent American-made. This locomotive will soon be operating here on the East Coast Corridor. Um, eventually, we'll get those in Sacramento, but those will be diesel elective. The final point I want to make before turning this over to my colleague, Mr. Blumenauer, is this. These are men and women in my district, Fairfield, California, in December of this year that attended a job fair that I put on in Fairfield. I expected to find a few of my uh, uh, fellow uh, citizens attending that. This job fair took place in December. The temperature was just below 40 degrees. It was a foggy and uh, rather cold day. More than 1,000 people lined up outside our job fair seeking a job. Americans want to go to work. Americans want to work. They want those good middle-class jobs that come from building the infrastructure. It's just not the hard hat jobs. These are the technicians, the engineers, the accountants, the secretaries, the people that are working on the software, all of those jobs. And these are the men and women that want them. And so our plea today to our colleagues on the Republican side is, let's go to work. Let's go to work here in the Congress. Let's put forward a transportation bill that avoids that transportation cliff that allows the American public to go back to work. Tens of thousands of jobs. Indeed, if we fail, three and a half million Americans will lose their job in the coming year if we fail to put together a transportation bill. That three and a half million, plus thousands upon thousands more, will be able to go to work if we get this transportation program moving. The President has given us a program, the Grow America program. If there are better ideas, they should come forward. We should pass that legislation, we should act upon that legislation, improve upon it, figure out the financing, if the President's notion of ending unnecessary corporate tax loopholes and giveaways isn't the best way, then let's put together a better way. And so with that, Mr. Uh, Speaker, 
I would yield back my share of the time and, if possible, turn it over to my colleague, Mr. Blumenauer, to manage the remaining portion of this.